So today what I thought we would do is I'm going to take some photos of the glass and I'm going to show you a way that you can repair it using a 3D modeling program and then um, exporting the model from the photogrammetry package into the 3D modeling program, doing some fix up and then bring it, bringing it back in and then retexturing everything. So let's get to it and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm here in 3DF Zephyr, and what we're going to try to do is process the images. And I did, in fact, go out and I took a number of photographs of the uh, the brick wall and the glass. And I didn't do anything too crazy. I didn't get up close, so I'm not going to get a lot of high detail. Uh, the real point of this is just to show that the resultant mesh that you get on glass is almost always extremely, extremely noisy, even though the point cloud might look like it's okay. So it requires a bit of repair and a bit of touch up um, whenever you're doing a uh, photogrammetry model. So uh, I may even show this a couple of ways on how you can improve the meshed model in the end. But uh, really what we're going to be doing is processing the project normally and then uh, doing some things with importing and exporting and, and repairing in other programs. So let's get started with this. And it's sitting on the bottom there, which looks pretty good. So let's have a look at the glass and see what it looks like. And, you know, from far, if you look at it, hey, you, you know, you'd be thinking, hey, that looks fantastic or whatever. But you can start to see evidence over here uh, in this area that it just it looks kind of noisy. And as we get closer, you'll see that the glass is going to have all kinds of uh, noise uh, in front of it and behind it and it's a little bit denser here where there were the shades that dropped down uh, but again quite noisy so it's gonna have a really really hard time trying to figure out where the surface is there whereas you know here on the brick uh, you can see that it's it's a bit cleaner like it's a bit crisper and there's not a lot of noise on there and like I said, I could have done a better job here of uh, getting closer and more details, but that's not the purpose of this particular exercise. So the next process, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate what the mesh would look like if we just proceeded forward from here. Let's have a look at what we got. Let's see what this mesh looks like. So right off the bat from far here, um, not too bad, but let's get in and have a look. And you'll see that there's a lot of waviness and it might be a little difficult to see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off the color because it's a little bit deceiving when you look at it. And you'll see even here there was even a hole. So I'm just going to look at it like this. And now you'll see that there's an absolute mess over here um, where the uh, the glass should be. Right, a real disaster. Up here could have been better. And even when I took the photos, this part here could have been if I had... Um, photograph this uh, a little bit better that would have been fine but the real goal here was really just to look at the the glass and and see that you know there's obviously some issues going on here so what we're going to do is we're going to try and repair this and we could do this a couple of ways one is we can delete this data inside of 3df zephyr Another way would be to export this out and then what we'll be able to do is uh, edit it in uh, another program. I'll probably use 3D Studio Max, um, but uh, yeah, you'll see that there's some difficulties here. But I won't get too, uh, too wrapped up here right now with this. Let's just go ahead and uh, export this out. Since I'm going to be looking at this in 3D Studio Max, that's what I'm going to be using to delete some polygons and then uh, stitch in a, uh, a plane. Uh, I'll just look at it in here. So let's just see if this works. I'm going to import the mesh and looking at the settings. Okay, flip ZY. I don't want to do that. I want to keep that the same and I'm just going to import this as is and hopefully it should uh, come in okay. All right, let me maximize the window here. All right, not too bad. So if I look at this, so you can see it's just an absolute mess. And if I go to the front view, yeah, I'm in wireframe. Let me just go to default shading. Yeah, this obviously needs some uh, some help here. Okay, so what we're going to do is delete um, these uh, these uh, windows here, the glass, and we'll leave everything else kind of intact in between. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have to um, obviously select this, and I'm just going to go up to the modify tab. I'm not really going to get too deep into what I'm doing here with 3D Studio Max, but basically what I'm going to be doing is making selections um, across here. Now I'm just pulling on a thing I need to do selections, excuse me. And what I'm going to do is just make a rectangular selection like that. And it selects all of the polys. I'm going to delete those and I'm just going to keep doing the same thing in between here. So uh, basically something like, oh, something similar. And I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to go too crazy here. Like that, that's fine. 
I'm going to do the same thing up here. Try to make it about as equal as possible for each one of these and close enough. And then I'll do another one down here and go up and you see this one is a real mess. So, um, let's say like that. Okay. So what I've done is I've just wiped out all the glass. Now what I want to do is add a plane. I want to add something that's really nice and flat. That's going to be nice and clean. So I'm going to do that by going to the uh, crate tab, clicking on plane, and I am going to just kind of click and drag in this direction, something like that, more or less. Okay. So that's, that's what it's done. I need to take a look at this to make sure that it's not, uh, it's obviously offset. So I got to line it up as best as I can. And let me go back here and make sure that it's, there's no gaps or anything. So if I go back, yeah, you can see there's some gaps or there's also some noise. Let me see how far back that would be. Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. That's kind of close. I think, let me see. That's too much. Eh. I think something like this is going to be okay. Well, I have to convert this and I'm going to combine it. So, um, what I'm going to do is take this plane and I'm going to convert it to an edible poly and I'm going to attach it, make it part of the overall mesh. So I'm going to take the polygon, I'm going to attach and I'm going to attach this part here and you see that it just turned the same color. So, um, eh, obviously up here, I could have done something a little different. Maybe we could have tweaked that a bit. Uh, but let's just leave it like this for now and see what happens. Okay. in the other software. So that's it. We've added a plane. Uh, we've made an adjustment here. So we're just going to export this back out. All right, let's switch back to Zephyr and then we're going to import this mesh inside and retexture it and see how it works. So we're back in Zephyr and now what we have to do is do an import of what we just exported from 3D Studio Max. So I'm going to import the model. So that's it there. Now I have two meshes that are on. So you can see here, all right, I've got two. So I'm going to shut the original one off and this is what I'm going to work with right now. So this is called glass repaired unstructured. So um, unstructured is, you can think of it as just, it's just kind of a mesh that doesn't have a lot of information tied to it. So, um, the camera positions right now that are shown or that were created from photogrammetry, uh, the original mesh, okay, this one was structured. So it knows which camera, where the, the camera positions are relative to the mesh and everything else, but this one, it doesn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, Hey, we want you to make this structured. So, and we will clone it and structure it. And let's do that. And it shouldn't take too long at all to do that. And once it's structured, okay, so this is the unstructured. Let's turn on the structured. It's this guy right here. Now what we can do is we can apply texture to this mesh. And I can see there's a little bit of a gap there. So I could have probably bought, brought that a little bit more forward. Yeah, probably could have. Actually, it's on an angle. So I could have tweaked that a bit better. But I think you'll get the idea here nonetheless. So let's do that. Let's just go ahead and go workflow. We're going to create a textured mesh. So we have a textured mesh and it's just not turned on right now because I had it off. So if you go here now, now you'll see that it's much better now because the glass was pushed a little bit forward or back. It's going to reproject incorrectly in some places. However, if you look at the actual mesh though, okay, it does have color now. Um, you can see these, uh, these little metal pillars here, whatever need to be fixed too. But this is a way that you could fix up the uh the mesh here and make it look a little bit better um you know whenever you get these these uh surfaces that are sort of going crazy on you and that sort of thing so yeah uh that's the basics so we have a textured mesh and uh it's not looking too bad at all and now you can see that the reprojection here is a little bit off simply because uh, the glass was pushed a little bit more forward or backward or whatever so you do need to find a decent spot for it but uh, from a geometry standpoint it does look a little bit better and you still get you know much cleaner uh data here and we do still have a fairly dense mesh. Like if we just look at the wireframe, you'll see these ones are very, very loose. Uh, they're just like big, big patches, which is fine because, um, you know, it's going to look at the texture on there and it should look just fine. So, uh, let me take that off. Anyway, that's how you can repair glass or even other types of surfaces that are relatively flat. But you can also do more complex geometry. Now it takes a bit more time because you need to do the modeling and you know, um, you need to have a really good estimate of the surface and the geometry, but this is absolutely possible. Thanks a lot folks for watching Click3D and we'll see you next time.